Okay. Uh, this is the start of how to get Savage Quest working on a PC. Potentially an arcade cabinet. So, this is actually on my arcade cabinet. I'm running Windows 11, works on Windows 10, really any version of Windows. The first thing you're going to do is go to this GitHub page. I've got the link in the description. Um, if you scroll down, you can actually find a version of Savage Quest that you can download here. I'm not quite sure how old this version is. It looks, I'm not sure what version of MAME it's from. I've gotten my, what you want to do is download the CHD. Now, personally, I have my CHD downloaded from the latest version of MAME. If you have a place to find those, then download that CHD. Uh, it should be around um, 300 megabytes, so a decent sized file. Now you can't do anything with this CHD, so the next thing you need to do is download CHD Man. That exists with MAME, but I downloaded a new version because the version I got has some batch files that makes it really easy to extract it. Uh, I googled, found this version. Um, you can download this here, CHD Man 0.251. I think this probably comes from the 0.251 version of MAME. Who knows? Downloaded it, and uh, we'll go from there. So first thing I'm going to do is, is extract everything, and then we'll go into setting up the game. So we've got our SavQuest CHD and our CHD man. Um, let me just minimize this for now. We're going to extract CHD man into its own directory. So I use 7-zip because it lets me extract into directories. And then we're going to move our CHD in there as well. So let's just uh, cut and paste it in here. Now, if we do CHD to Q, it's not going to work. There's an error in the batch file. So we will edit it, I like Notepad++. And all we're gonna do is here where it says extract CD, we're gonna extract HD. It's extracting a hard drive, not a CD for this. Okay, what this is gonna do is it's going to look for any files in this directory that end in CHD. It's going to run chd.exe with the command extract HD, and then extract it to the same name file um, .q. Okay, so I'm gonna hit that batch file, chd to q, and it'll start to run. Now this, this can take a little while. As you can see, it's 1.6% complete. I'm just going to pause the video and then we will continue when that's good. All right, it's finished extracting. The batch file closed on its own. And now I'm left with this .cue file. Uh, as you can see, it's 4.2 gigs, quite big. Uh, we need to now extract this file. So I will then use 7-zip let's just extract it to a SavQuest directory. Let's do that. All right, now once that's done, you can delete the file. There's no point keeping this four gig file around. We can open up the folder and we see that there's two files in here, each of them around two gigs. Uh, if you were to open these, basically it's just an image of whatever the hard drive was. So the one that's two gigs has a recycle bin that has nothing in it. Um, but still taking up two gigs. And the other one is where everything is. So what we'll do is we will now extract this one. Show more 7-zip. And I'll just extract it here. No point putting it in your folder. It's pretty quick to extract. Let's delete these two gigabyte files. No need to keep those. All right. Now we have basically an image. Um an image of what the hard drive look, would have looked like on a Savage Quest machine. Uh, this is essentially a Windows image. You've got DOS. This would have been an old Windows 95 machine or probably even just a DOS machine. Who knows? 1999, probably Windows 98, actually, uh, if it ran on anything. Um, what we're going to do is go into the SQ05 file folder. You can actually follow directions here um, on this GitHub page. So in SQ05, SQ bin, Q and bin, we're now going to drop some additional files. We're going to get these files from the GitHub page from the release. So let's go to the release here and download this zip file. Let me go back to the instructions so we don't lose where we are. And I'll just open up a new tab for downloads to open up this zip file. And now that we're in the correct directory, so sq05, sq bin. I'm going to drag and drop everything here. Now, right away, it's going to just work. Um, if I double click WinSav, the game will run. But unfortunately, there will be no way to actually play the game because the controls won't work. If you have an Xbox or um, 
Xbox type controller, um, sorry, X input controller, it will work. There's no way to sort of get it going. Um, there aren't any keyboard controls, but the game does run. Now we're gonna work on controls. Let me just kill this game. The other thing is that there's no keybinds to quit the game. So we're gonna get a solution for that as well. All right, so this uses X input and it says if you don't have an X, if you have an X input controller, you're good to go already. Uh, your controls, the left stump, thumb stick moves you around. A is bite, X is charge, Y is roar, and then start is start. Uh, if you don't have an X input controller, you want to download this program called X36CE. Um, basically download it, put it in a directory. I've already set it up myself in a directory and I will go through some of the settings. Now, before we get to that, we can also go through some graphics settings. If we open up this Voodoo CPL, you can change some of the graphics settings here. Um, so for instance, I have it full screen, but I want it to keep the four by three aspect ratio. Um, and I want it to look like a CRT. So let's do that. Let's hit apply and okay. Creates this configuration folder. And I will navigate now to where I have my X36CE settings already. Now I use this for other programs as well. I use it for a virtual pinball table um, because I have an accelerometer. Anyways, none of that matters. What you're going to do here is hit add game and you'll see a list of games. Actually, it'll open up and you want to navigate to where your game was. Uh, this would be in the downloads folder. Th this is an absolute directory. So you, wherever you keep your game in the end, it will have to stay there and you're going to choose Win Savage. I've already got it set up, so I'm not gonna do it again, but I will show you my settings. Now I have Win Savage set up in a different directory. So if we go there, what I've done here is I've um, set axis stick up to axis one. So when I, actually I found that it was a little messed up, but you can play around with these settings to get to what you want. So when I move my stick, um, it, it will move in eight cardinal directions. And I've got my buttons mapped as well. So you can see everything lighting up there. This is on the arcade controller. Um, now, when I run the game, for one, the uh, the aspect ratio should be correct, but also the control should work. So now I can hit start, start the game, skip this. And yeah, I can move around. If you find that the directions aren't working quite right, like I found, for instance, that left and right were actually up and down, um, you can you can adjust that. Again, still left with now the last problem, no way to exit this game, which is a little bit problem. If you're running a an arcade like I am and you've got a front end, you want to be able to quit this game some. So we're going to get around that with auto hotkey. I'm going to shut this down because I'm going to write an auto hotkey script that will launch X uh, this X360 CE and the game. And then when I hit a specific button, it's going to exit the game. Uh, the reason we're going to do that is because there really is no good way to exit the game. Now, personally, I'm going to use this button here, which is my exit button. Um, I know because I've wired this all up myself that that translates to, I believe, button 12 on joystick two. So I'm going to remember that. Everything else, I don't care about those buttons are fine. Let's go to our script. So I'm going to walk you through the script that I've written here. Um, the first thing you need to do is you need to set the working directory here to be the same as wherever your game is installed. So for instance, mine's on my D drive. It's in a TechnoParrot directory because originally I was going to use TechnoParrot. SavQuest SQ5 SQ bin. Detect hidden windows, I keep that on, just makes it easier in case that window isn't visible right away. And you want persistent because you want this script to run until we tell it to exit. The next thing it's gonna do is first, it's going to run our X36DCE program. So that's our, our joystick uh, calibration program. And then immediately it's gonna run the game. Now it's going to wait for uh, joystick two, button 12 to be pushed. So that's the exit button I have before. You can change this to whatever you want. Once that's pushed, it's going to uh, kill the process of Win Savage and kill our 360 application. 
if this is running in big box, which is what I use, we're going to just wait 200 milliseconds and then we're going to activate uh, the big box window. So if big box is already running, it's going to make sure that that window is active again. So if anything happened, if, you know, for some reason it wasn't selected and, you know, the sound isn't working, this will fix that. After we've pushed this button, it's also going to exit this program. And then this just closes this loop here, right? So if we run this program right up, right off, you'll see everything launch. So you saw real quick there, it launched my 360 controller. It launched the game. I can go into it. The controls are working. And now if I put, push this exit button, it's going to instantly exit the game, exit that script. What we can do now is we can um, compile this. So we can convert this AHK file into an exe and use that to add it to LaunchBox or BigBox, something like that. So if I were to put it here and compile it, I've already compiled it. Um, I now have here, I've got a whole bunch of these for a lot of different things that I use, but emu savquest is what I've called it. The way you're one gonna add it is add it as a computer file. So we've got our exe. We're going to just drag it in here. What is it? It's not a ROM file. It's none of the above. It's just a shortcut. What are we importing for? Let's say Windows. Next. Use it in its current location. Sure. Just click through all this. It's not going to find anything, obviously. Um, okay. And then here we can rename this to Savage Quest. Finish. It's not going to be able to find anything in the LaunchBox database because it's not a Windows game. So what we're going to do instead is go and edit it, change this to Arcade. I will also favorite it. Um, and then if we search the meta database again, we should be able to find it. Now we found it. Uh, the first thing you want to do is go to Emulation, turn off using an emulator. So it's just going to launch this executable that we've added, and we can download metadata now. Now, fortunately, there's no videos for this, so you might have to make your own if you care about that. And it'll disappear from the computers, and it should show up now in our um, arcade category. I'm going to add it to my favorites. And then last, I will show you launching it from Big Box. All right, find this game, Savage Quest. Here it is. No playtime. Um, oh, and I've got a video. So I already had a video for this uh, that I had made myself, which is why it's showing up. But if we launch the game now, it should launch that script. So it will launch the, that Xbox 360 CE. Um, it'll launch the game. There you go. Now, if I hit my exit button, give it a second, it'll go back to uh, the big box screen. That's that. Hope that helps.